All right, and we are back. 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 Right, and we are back. And today we're back with another reaction video. Uh, and guys, you know, obviously it's been a rough couple of weeks for your boy. Uh, but you know, for anyone out there, if it's been a rough couple of weeks for you too, I want you to know first and foremost, I'm here for you. I love you, and we're always thinking about you here at the channel. So, you know, all well wishes from here. Uh, but today, uh, if you read the if you read the title, obviously, then you already know we have to talk about weed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so yes, we are going to talk about weed thanks to our good buddies here at Curtis Art. Uh, I love this channel. Obviously, I haven't done one of their videos in a while, so it's really good. We're going to get back to some science. Uh, this is something I'm a little bit of an expert on myself, so I'll be able to give you guys all the expert knowledge on all this stuff verify the facts make sure it's true you know all the fun stuff so if you're ready to have some fun ladies and gentlemen we're gonna go ahead and get right into it uh if you haven't already though make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel uh and if you haven't for some reason you don't subscribe to curtis art make sure you subscribe to them make sure you like comment and subscribe to them as well uh go ahead and comment let them know i sent you it may be fun uh maybe they'll subscribe back you never know uh also uh if you know the link will be in the description below uh so with that being said um i think there's just one last thing i do need to bring up uh that is that if you guys don't like comment and more importantly subscribe more, most importantly subscribe uh youtube will come through that door right over there and they will we need to talk about weed with curtis art Cannabis has been vilified to a ridiculous degree for the last century, but it's now finally being decriminalized in more and more places around the world. Yeah, see, it really has been vilified for almost no reason outside of like capitalist reasons, you know. Also, you know, there will be a moment where we got to get real serious about this, I'm sure. That's coming up in a video. But for now, we're going to talk about the good things. And guys... It has been unfairly vilified. Like, let's be honest here. It's just recently been legalized in Germany, and for very good reasons. Com hey, shout out to Germany. Compared to legal drugs like alcohol, which will cause one in 20 deaths just this year, cannabis yep, yep. is pretty mild. So to justify harsh prosecution and punishment, its negative effects have been wildly overstated. Naturally, there was a lot of pushback, and here's something went wrong. If yeah, so here's the thing about people who are for it, though. Here's the thing about potheads. Uh, you know, we're not all the good ones. You know what I mean? Like, some people are unreasonable. <laughs> and, like, you know, freaking, like, no, you you shouldn't get anything you want. You know, the, those are the people. And then others are more chill. They're relaxed about it. You know, they smell like some weed. But outside of that, they're good people. Uh, but here's the thing that I don't think people talk about enough, and that is the gateway from cigarettes to hardcore drugs, because they, and I know he hasn't got into it yet, and we're only like 30 seconds into the video, but you know what? I'm feeling a little bit anxious about this, so I'm going to get it out there right now. Cigarettes are the number one gateway to doing hardcore drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you start smoking cigarettes as a child you will eventually that is the number one marker to doing hardcore drugs it's not smoking weed early it is smoking cigarettes early and if you really think about it think about the people who have parents that would let them get away with smoking a cigarette at around 12 years old i'm just saying it correlates to other factors in life that all build up to maybe hardcore drugs, at least getting introduced to them 
in life. You know what I mean? Not saying they're going to do it, but maybe there'll be a close proximity to it or they'll have people, you know, they'll have people around them who don't care enough not to tell them to do it, considering they're not telling them not to smoke cigarettes at 12. You know, you never know. So, you know, that that's that's that. Let's get into it. If you followed the discourse over the last few years, you might have got the impression that weed has almost only upsides and few, if any, negative side effects. Uh -oh. We ourselves contributed to that narrative. What made this worse is that criminalization made it very hard for scientists to study cannabis, especially its long-term effects. They faced bureaucratic and legal hurdles, and studies often had to rely on small sample sizes. In the last few years, this finally started to change, so it's time to bring new evidence to the discussion. Uh-oh. Here we go. Time for some bad news, too, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. And, well, it's not pretty. While weed is still much less harmful than alcohol, it does have a dark side. It is more addictive than we thought and can have significant negative effects if you use it long term. It seems that... Uh, what are you doing? What? Before you tell us how dumb we are, please watch the video. <laughs> already? That's hilarious. But here's the thing. People are going to be upset about this already without, because the people who have been smoking weed normally have been doing it for a very long time. So even if they have the bad habits, they don't see it. It takes other people to see it. And then sometimes they'll be like, oh, well, I have this bad habit, but it's not associated to the weed. It's just coincidental that I smoke weed and have this bad habit that they say most people who smoke weed have. Like, it's okay to just admit, you know, like, hey, I'm a pothead. I'm lazy that it happens, you know? I have that issue myself. I am lazy. Now, to be fair, I was lazy before <laughs> the weed. So it is coincidental in this sort of situation. <laughs> Editor, are you going to cut that out? I don't know. That's to hilarious. be crystal clear, we think prohibition doesn't work and cannabis should be legal. But this also means that we need to treat it as what it is, a drug with unique upsides and downsides. So let's take an honest look at some of the latest research together. Weed is getting stronger and stronger. True. Cannabis's magic juice is tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. It docks on your cannabinoid receptors, which affects various brain functions. I can verify the weed is getting stronger. And here's another problem. Your immune systems might be getting weaker to it or something. So like, you know, or building up a stronger tolerance. So, you know, it's going to take more to get you the same feeling that you had before. And all of a sudden, now you got a problem. Now you got a problem, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hey, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. He hasn't even said it. He hasn't even said it yet. So he might not say it. I am saying it. I, I am saying it though. Activates some regions and calms down others, creating a fun cocktail of sensations. The more THC, the more intense the high. And people seem to be into higher highs, or at least this is what the market is providing. In the US, Canada, and in Europe, the concentration of THC in legal and illegal cannabis products has more than doubled in the last few decades. While ever more potent strains are bred, products like edibles or concentrates with more than 60% THC have become increasingly common, while the share of products with less than 15% THC has declined. Unfortunately, just about every problem weed creates gets worse at higher THC doses. At the same time, more and more people use weed. In the US, more people consumed cannabis daily than alcohol for the first time in 2022. Oh, wow. I'm actually very surprised at this graph because alcohol is almost like a staple in American culture, where it's not even just like something that like, oh, like you'll hear it about like, oh, your parents get off work and your dad gets a beer, you know, like we see beer commercials all the time, like literally all watch a football game, watch an American football game for all my non-Americans out there. Uh, watch the NFL, you know, there's a bunch of beer advertisements on there uh you know for all my americans out there go ahead and watch a, a football game as they call it out there uh or football you know they they call it football you know so don't blame me um and i'm sure they also have uh 
commercials for alcohol as well. Like alcohol is a major brand in America. So to see that take a dip and go uh, no, b- below marijuana without it, they don't even show marijuana commercials. They don't even show you like an ad for like a weed company. Like, come on. In Canada, 26% of people 16 and older use it, up from 22% in 2018. It's not possible to say if legalization is the reason for this, though, since studies are pretty inconsistent and vary massively between different uses. People are going to say no. Let's be honest here. They're going to ask you, do you smoke? And then you're going to be like, smoke what? And then they're going to be like, hmm, I don't know what that lingo means. And trust me, it means that they smoke weed. Uh, If they say smoke what? It means that they're not just smoking one thing or they don't just have the idea or they're being like, what do you think I smoke? I'm I'm smoking something different than what you're thinking, you know, or I might be smoking the same thing. What are you talking about here? But that's like an old school thing. But, you know, depending on if your state's legal or not, I'm sure now that it's legal, more people are going to be like, oh, yeah, I smoke weed, by the way. But, you know, even if you're I will be honest, though, guys, even if you live in a non-legal state, tell your doctor what you do. Uh, doctors aren't going to call the cops on you and tell them, oh, my patient smokes weed. No, they're they're normally pretty chill. Um, they just want to know so they can help you and diagnose you with all the right things. So if you are doing something like, you know, you smoke weed recreationally, daily, uh, if you drink, you know, daily or recreationally, whatever that may be, you know, make sure you let your doctor know if they ask. You know, if they're saying, hey, do how often do you drink? Just be honest. How often do you smoke? Be honest. If you're doing any, if you're doing other drugs outside of that, like hardcore drugs, let them know. They're gonna tell you to stop, but let them know they they shouldn't call the cops on you. You know. In some, consumption went up. In others, it stayed stable, and the trend to use more weed began in the early 90s and sped up in the 2000s, way earlier than legalization. Because mm, around 92. Uh, like the chronic came out and like blunts and stuff started being like more popular. So this is really like the rise of like blunt culture and everything as well. So you really got to follow. Cause like in the seventies and stuff, they was all smoking joints and like bongs and stuff like that. And like in the nineties and two thousand, I feel like two thousands is really where bongs really started coming back into style. So that's like a whole nother thing. And then now you got the additional things of like vapes and all the other stuff. But for a point like the 2000s, like bubblers and all the other stuff, those was popping off too. Uh, vaporizers and, you know, like all those like gravity bombs, all the type of things. So you also got to think about the rise of the technology that they're using uh, to uh, consume these products, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's not just your old school papers back in like back in the day. That's kind of it's kind of played out, you know, in different communities, like different things, depending on where you live and, you know, what you're doing. You know, you can't just be having a bong everywhere where you walk around to. Sometimes you might need a blunt. Some people still like joints, you know, and then some people have their preferences over leaves or papers, all this. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes into this graph that's not really shown here. So today, more people consume more weed than ever before in the last century and it's the strongest it's ever been. What are we seeing as a result of this? Let's start with something that used to get you laughed out of the room, addiction. Weed addiction oh, yeah. and withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, guys, by the way, I want you to know you are addicted to weed if you smoke every day. Uh, and I know you could stop if you wanted to, but you don't want to and you won't. So, like, you know, let's be honest with ourselves here. You got a weed addiction. It's cool. Just admit it to yourself. I say it all the time, but I want you guys to make sure to say it out there. So if you're out there smoking and stuff, just let just make sure, you know, Uh, you're not one of those. You're not like, oh, I'm not addicted. I just really need to smoke or else I'm going to be agitated. Hey, I've been there before. You know what that's called? A weed addiction. (laughs) A big narrative about weed is that it's not addictive or at least not that big of a deal. And for most people, this is true. Studies clearly show that the majority handle it well. For 8 out of 10 using weed, it's just a casual high and not problematic at all. About 2 in 10 users develop a cannabis use disorder, or CUD. CUD has 11 different symptoms, from the inability to stop when you've had enough, to using it when you know it will have negative consequences, to tolerance and withdrawal. 
they can all basically be reduced to you're doing it too often, even if it's bad for you and it's less fun than it could be. There are three major risk factors here. The amount of THC, how often you consume, and your age when you start using cannabis. The more THC, the more often, and the younger you are when you start, the higher your risk. If you smoke too much weed too often, it will have negative impacts on your life. So if this is you, toning it down a bit will make a big difference. Now, if you having jitters and stuff at work, that's a little crazy. But also, from my experience, and I never worked at one of these places, uh, but from my experience, uh, the service industry is uh, fueled off of uh, marijuana and alcohol and a litany of other legal and illegal drugs. So that's that's just what I heard, ladies and gentlemen. I, you know, I'm no uh, professional um, owner of restaurants and restaurant maker. You, you know, I, I didn't go to restaurantology school. You know what I mean? One in 10 users develops a serious addiction. They usually consume daily and their life is significantly impaired or held back because they spend a lot of their time either using or recovering from cannabis use. Damn, do I gotta clean my room? Do I gotta clean this up? All right, I might have to clean up after this, but you know, that is, it actually has nothing to do with the video um, and what I was seeing. This is actually a separate situation altogether. I, just, I coincidentally had to clean, uh, you know? Since their brain is building a tolerance, they need increasingly high doses or stronger weed often both. Studies found a variety of negative effects. Heavy users can experience bad moods, feel irritable, restless, paranoid, anxious, and even depressive. In a sad twist of irony, for many addicts, it feels like they need weed to fight these symptoms. Maybe it did actually help at first, while in reality, it makes those symptoms stronger and more persistent. Mm -hmm. Studies also found that loneliness and frequent cannabis use go hand in hand. If you feel lonely, you're more likely to use weed, and if you use weed, you may experience more loneliness. It now, that study is very subjective on the uh, people that you are around. Uh, you know, I feel like there's a lot of people where when you do start smoking, you actually get introduced to a lot of new people. Now, maybe those people don't stay around forever, but also I tend to notice that smoking doesn't really like negate too many people it does negate people but not like of like too many people unless maybe you maybe you are the person in this scenario that it's just way too like i i can't go five minutes without it you know like I, it's very difficult so i i understand but you know maybe but at the same time i haven't seen any um evidence from my own life to show that smoking weed uh, will be like bringing a, a lot of people away from you. Uh, although it definitely could, I, I can't see that. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it personally. You know, bring together more people, not like myself, but like other people who I know who smoked before, and they were like, "Oh, I don't know this other person," and they smoke with them, and then they became friends. So, like, I've seen it happen. Uh, but they've seen it happen the other way. So mine is anecdotal evidence. Theirs is based off studies. So, you know, again, whichever one you guys want to believe, you know, it's really up to you. You know, there's some, some really good anecdotal evidence here, or there's some like bona fide studies, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm just the one, you know, I'm no studyologist over here. It's not always easy to say which I, came I, I, first, I gotta, I gotta but they seem to reinforce each stop. other. So, on the one hand, cannabis makes loneliness feel much less bad. On the other hand, it can also make you feel more socially awkward than you actually are and withdraw from friends. Mm. This can lead to a downward spiral that ends in self-isolation and chronic loneliness. Mm. Another thing many people who consume a lot experience is a mental numbness that makes boredom feel okay because it impacts the reward system of your brain. Not great, but good enough. You can spend your days killing time binging mildly interesting stuff, being numb rather than having fun. Boredom Man. is a signal to your mind to get creative or learn something new, but this is suppressed. 
This also makes quitting so much harder because your daily routine suddenly seem boring and unexciting, making it very tempting to go back. If you find your Whoa, what are those pills? Boring and unexciting, making it very tempting. Bro, weed pills and joints? Yeah, this person may, uh, I've never, I don't know, that's a lot right there, buddy. To go back. If you find yourself using constantly, this can also stunt your development as a person. The numbness dulls bad feelings, making it easy not to deal with them. But in life, you can only get over bad True. feelings if you actually feel them, and you have to process them to grow. Lastly, let's talk about physical withdrawal symptoms. The more you consume, the worse they'll be for you, especially if you use daily. Withdrawal can cause headaches, sweating or chills, decreased appetite, in severe cases even fever, nausea and abdominal pain. You might have trouble falling asleep and if you do, you might have disturbing and vivid dreams. Oh wow, well, this is interesting right here. The withdrawal can put you in a depressive mood where life feels daft and pointless. You can feel restless, angry, anxious or nervous. You may feel unable to do anything at all. After a few days, these symptoms will begin to subside and after a few weeks, they'll be gone entirely. The okay. exact time depends. And that's when you start smoking again, ladies and gentlemen. The high is going to be incredible. It's going to be like the first time you ever smoked ever. So, yeah, this is really good advice. Uh, yeah, make sure you go through all of your... <laughs> Guys, I am joking. Do not start smoking again after this. You know, that's not a tolerance break. That's stopping. You know, I, I get the I know I just made a joke about it being a tolerance break, but that is a that is, I, I do have to ex, like explain it out for some people sometimes, you know, not you subscribers. Uh, I have to explain it to the people who don't subscribe because then they just comment and they don't understand that what things are and aren't jokes. But subscribers are the real ones. You guys already know uh, what is and isn't a joke. You know, that's why I love you guys. You know, I like them, but I love you guys. I want to make sure you guys know that. Depends on how much and how long you've been consuming cannabis. Now, let's get to the worst part. Weed may damage your brain. Mm. This section was not fun to research because there's fierce debate among researchers how bad weed is for your brain and whether it has irreversible long-term consequences or not. There's no consensus yet and it's hard to say anything definitive. Having said that, THC directly interferes with critical brain chemistry. There is some evidence that it may alter its structure. If it does, this may go away again if you quit after a few years or not. We don't know yet. The consequences vary a lot between individuals, but especially for heavy users, they have a variety of potentially unfunny downsides. The most common one is that your memory gets significantly worse. Sustained heavy use may reduce your ability to learn, your reasoning, perception, attention span, decision making, language abilities and impulse control. Most mm. negative effects seem to go away or at least weaken. Now, I will say, though, it feels like some of those things may be, um, I guess, like for people who smoke weed, it already attracts people with a certain personality type that already fit a lot of those categories. Uh, it's like not it's like how like with police officers, you know, like it's not like how all police officers are just like you know, angry people or like, you know, do violence all the time. But people who are angry and do like to do violence are normally attracted to positions where they get to have that authority, such as becoming a cop. So if you translate that over to like weed, it's the kind of like the same where like, you know, people who uh, maybe have that personality type of being like lazy or, you know, more chill, laid back may just be attracted to weed on a more consistent basis versus weed turning them, like changing their brain into having those habits. You know, it's like people with those habits go to it versus the the marijuana changing their brain into giving them those habits. So I don't know. Again, I'm no studiologist here. We'll can see. over time after you quit. But again, we simply don't know enough and need more research. Where the evidence is much clearer is that consuming a lot of weed is really bad for teenagers on multiple levels. Now that we can all agree on, teenagers should not be smoking, 
Like, if you are, you know, a teenager, you shouldn't be doing anything. Go to school. Graduate high school first. Go to college. You know, and then, you know, who knows? I don't know. Be 18 and uh, in college. Then you can make some decisions like that. But until then, go back to class. Go study. You know, play some video games. Be normal. You know, stop trying to do drugs and stuff. Like, it's not cool. It's not even cool. Why would you even want to? Everybody who is an adult now would love to go back to just being a regular teenager, even if they could just, you can just go back to being a teenager with no drugs. They would all choose it because it is just better to like, you know, to be able to have that, like, you know, that sense of like, you're a kid. You're, you're just freaking be a kid. Come on. It's cool. If you start using heavily early, you have many more years to build up potentially negative side effects. Teens who use a lot are much more likely to become addicted to weed. This may just be correlation and weed may not be the underlying cause, but heavy weed users are more likely to perform poorly in school and less likely to finish their education. They are on average less satisfied with their life and what they've achieved. This may simply be because if your memory and motivation are stunted, you have fewer interesting experiences and forget the ones you do have. And there is strong evidence that teen users are way more likely to develop mental health issues like psychosis, schizophrenia, depression, or anxiety later in life. Once again, the- I don't know about that anxiety part. I feel like everybody's got that now. Like, <laughs> and let's be honest, if you've been alive long enough, you might get depressed, so, I mean, I, I'm not giving the weed points here. I, I'm 100% agreeing with them. Uh, I, I, you know, I just think life itself is very depressing. The younger you start, the higher the risk. And it True. also seems to rise massively with high THC doses, oh, making no. highly potent cannabis products even more dangerous for teens. See, that's another thing. I just can't get into doing edibles and gummies and stuff as well. So, like, I really do steer away from those. And I would never advise... Again, if you're a kid, why are you doing this stuff? Just be a kid. Okay, let's wrap this up. We've only focused on the negative sides in this video. That was the whole point. True. As we said before, for most people, weed in moderation is totally fine and definitely way less harmful than alcohol. You do you. We're not your parents. The upside of moderation is also that when you do it, your experience will be more intense and special. But for teens, weed especially... Yeah, exact. Stop giving it to teenagers and parents. Do not let your teenagers just smoke weed. It's not cool. Parents, be better. Using it regularly or a lot of it is a bad idea with potentially life-changing consequences. This still feels mean. Like, at this point, look at him. He's sweating. He a little addict. Little mini weed addict over here. She just holding a joint over his head. Like, nah, you can't get this. You can't, like, come on, man. That's still kind of messed up. <laughs> we know that criminalization did nothing to make this better. We now have a new chance under legalization. It begins with being open and honest about the state of science and acknowledging that weed is one drug among many others. Certainly not the worst one by a long shot, but also problematic for at least one to three out of ten people using it. If you really have... I thought it was two out of ten. I don't know. Is it, or one to three out of ten people. Okay. ...have to try cannabis, there is a time and place, and that's in your twenties. If you're younger, the science is clear, don't do it. At least, not yet. You'll have plenty of time to experiment later. Hey, wait till you're in your 20s and then you can smoke all the weed you want. That's what they're saying here. That's not explicitly what they're saying, but it's kind of the gist of what that's what I'm saying that they're saying. I'm putting words into their mouths at this point now. I believe from my translation, uh, well, actually, uh, nah, I don't, uh, just wait, guys. Don't do it in your teens. When you're in your 20s, do it responsibly. It's treat it like alcohol, you know? Do it responsibly. And wait till you're over the age of 21 and then do it. I mean, even I, I think I said earlier 18, uh, but, you know, they're saying in your 20s, I'm, you know, I would even I would go and agree with them. You know, if you want to do it at 18, I'm not going to be upset at you, but I would suggest wait till you're in your 20s or something. And then you could buy uh, uh, your first blunt and then your first beer at the same time. 
and then you know see which one you like more i don't know you know you're probably gonna like the weed more because let's be honest here beer tastes horrible like unless you just drink a bunch of them or unless you get like a really good brand like beer is not great and if you're a kid i think my first beer i ever chose to consume uh what did i try for the first time like a heineken or something it was horrible I, i i hated it uh, now I did go to college and I did drink before the age of 21, but now that I'm in my thirties, I can legally say that I did. I don't, I don't know if that's how that works. Uh, but I'm saying it now. Uh, it wasn't like, you got to drink so much beer before it starts tasting good. Like by the, by the time you drink enough beer for it to taste decent, you're drunk. And that's just how beer works. Apparently, like it's never great unless you drink enough to be at the point where you're like, man, this starts tasting good. Then you stand up and then you're like, whoa, my legs are a little shaky. Beer tastes good. Now, those are the two signs that I need to know that I have consumed too much beer. Back to the video. (laughs) Let's do a different experiment now. What? With the help of today's sponsor, Odoo, a Odoo. business management software, you can do the first step of starting a new business in three minutes. Whoa! Don't believe me? I bet. Whoa, do with Odoo if you know what I mean. Yes. Kurt is already sponsored by Odoo, ladies and gentlemen, and you already know how I love these sponsors. Now I get the time, uh, my chance to, you know, shine here with my promo skills. And what I want you guys to know is with Owu, uh, Odoo, no, it's not Owu, it's Odoo, that's how good I am, it's Odoo, you can actually get all of this information here for just 1909, uh, what is this, uh, pounds, uh, I don't know, a month, this is European currency, I don't really know about all that stuff, uh, it's good stuff though, it's like $19, uh, euro, 19 euros a month. Uh, you'll get all the apps. It'll give you access to time management, uh, CRTM studios. This is all for building a uh, business here, subscriptions, rentals, point of sales. You'll be getting all the information you need when you're starting your business all in one platform. And it's going to be incredible. I know you got that, uh, you know, that storefront uh, that you're trying to set up. Uh, This is going to help out with that. I know you got that uh, bakery that you're trying to do. You got that little business where you be cooking and baking and things and it's going great. Now you can use this for all those resources, really manage everything and get that business structure together. I know you got that. Um, where you're trying to like start up a tutoring company where you're uh, you're trying to tutor people and now you want to get that set up and you're trying to get other tutors involved in it. Uh, I know you're trying to set up that uh, there's somebody with uh, uh, they're trying to become uh, their own local garbage man. They're, they're trying to replace the local garbage uh, company in their city with a uh, r- local air p- option you know, like a competitor, uh, this will help you out with that. Uh, you're trying to start your own, uh, glass, uh, factory, um, and they make uh, glass that only goes into glass making factories. Uh, so you're a glass making factory that makes, uh, glass making factories, and this is going to help you out with that. So, you know, all the information that you need is all in one place. It is Odoo. Uh, it sounds like ooh woo, but it's ooh do. It's incredible. Let's select the website application to yeah. ensure our Go to the website presence. application. Then you just follow. Secure your presence. It do all the stuff. Bit. It's gonna be incredible. Look at this. You want a website? You want an online store? You want to blog about it? You get to do everything you need to do within one platform. E learning? Of course you want to do e learnings. I got to do e learnings at my job. There's so much fun. The jolly good time, woo woo woo, woo. oh woo, uh, or odu oh, is what they would say. What that's what you say when you have odu oh, and you're like, oh man, this is so incredible. Oh odu oh, odu, oh, you know you're you you, you hit them with odu oh, because it's like so cool and this is like your way of saying so cool. It's like odu. Oh, like, yeah, I got this do e-learnings uh, and learn all about my businesses. They told me about all the things I need to know about, like, if I work at a bank and not not to steal money from the bank. That's a good one to know. Some people might not know that. They'd be like, yo, I worked at a bank. They gave me the job. I want to steal from them. Oh, crap. I just did an e-learning. It told me not to steal from this bank. 
thank God. Because, you you know, if you want to start a clothing store and people are like, yo, I just want to steal clothes. Now they do e-learning. First lesson, don't steal the clothes if you work here. Oh, my God. I think I worked at the wrong place. And then you need you. It helps you out as a business and it helps them out as uh, employees. You know, I know this sounds like a ridiculous rant, but look how you get to make your own logo. They made their logo here. I don't think that's true, but they uploaded it, and that was cool. They let you upload a logo and then possibly do some edits to it. It's all incredible. Look at the trim. Look at the title. Look at the, the how you can set your website up in different ways. You know, people like this kind of artwork. I think more me personally, I'm more. I think I'm more of like this type of artwork type of guy. Maybe this type. You know, this is also cool. This is like a fourth place. This one, this one's like a good last for me. This is second to last. I kind of like this one. It gives me old school vibes. And if I was in like 2001, I would actually choose this one more. But now with the my new sensibilities and the fact that I've been adjusted to it, I feel more inclined to uh, uh, like this one here. So those are my tips. But then you get to decide for your business and your people. So you got to uh, get to decide with O2. Bruce such an incredible advertisement. Guys, I think I did such a great job with this advertisement that it couldn't have done been better. Um you know, if I didn't do it myself, I'm actually really good at this. Uh, collection and has arrived. Also, bro, they got new stuff. Guys, go make sure y'all checking out their new stuff. This actually looks cool. Optimistic nihilist. Ha! That's hilarious. You are here, right on the chesticle. Look at this right here. This sweater or this scarf. That looks cool. And you get all this stuff. Look at this fancy hat right here. All these look, look at this stuff right here. I like that. This Keep sweater. You warm and look at this sweater right here. This is a good Christmas sweater, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, you can enjoy this sweater if you like space or science or you know anything. If you watch Curtis Art, I know you're looking at this sweater. Like I should be wearing a sweater. Yeah, I, they probably didn't even give it to the model. Uh, to keep they maybe they did I mean I'm just saying did they make him pay for the sweater because if if they didn't then it should be me I should be the person wearing the sweater right that's what you're thinking but that's also what I'm thinking because uh, I really mess with Curtis art bro I really mess with them like the long way they really cool to me so like you know I feel like I should get a sweater now I should purchase a sweater but I would enjoy if they provided me the sweater. Like I'm here and the sweater is here. So the sweater is like, you are here as in the sweater is here in my hand. That's what I would prefer uh, for this situation to be happening right now. Now, unfortunately that's not the current situation, but ladies and gentlemen, you could make that change. All you have to do is uh, reach out to Curtis Hart and be like, give him a sweater. Please, we love this guy and he loves your content and we love him loving your content and you love him doing the content too. Please send him a sweater. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know what? He's going to get a sweater. And that that's all a possibility, ladies and gentlemen. So again, reach out to them uh, once again for some people who may be new to the, you know, the channel. Thank you all. Uh, these are... Uh, hilarious jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Or neutron star. Dread and or are actually two sides of the same coin. Or scarf. Yeah. Wear this super soft scarf on cold winter walks and bring some light into the dark season. And at the core of this lineup is the optimistic nihilist t-shirt. It represents nothing less than the philosophy of Kurtz. Now, it doesn't actually move like it's doing in this uh, preview right here. Although... I I mean, I'm not 100% sure of that. I don't believe it moves. Uh, we're going to we're gonna double check that uh, later on, but I am not 100% sure that it actually moves. I think it just uh, stays stationary as far as all these designs. I don't believe it actually moves. You, you may have to pay only extra get one for shot that. at life, which is scary, but it also sets you free to do what truly makes you happy in life. We also create... They didn't start smoking. That's incredible. Eight other truly special products in our studio, like the new edition of our Human Era calendar. 
In 2025, we'll follow yeah. humanity's greatest journey that took our ancestors from East Africa all across the planet. All across. We spent a lot of time bringing these adventures to life, crafting epic illustrations worth a hey, of represent this periodic table though. That's I always mess with that periodic table. Look at this. Look at these cells. Come on, bro. Look at this right here. I don't I think that's a I think that's a uh that's like a virus or a germ or some type of like uh natural bacteria in our body with the fangs i'm assuming it's more like a virus or something or a germ but i believe that's what it may be here we'll see planner uh, to be extra prepared for the next year yeah. and this Incredible. gift giving season wow every single product you hey, buy that actually and for the next cool. year and yeah y'all might y'all might want to cop one of these this, this gift giving good. season yeah, that's every cool. single product you buy supports everything we do on every this channel. It all helps and enables us to. You know what helps, ladies and gentlemen, liking, commenting, and subscribing to this channel because that helps me. I'm actually very close to a goal of hitting uh, my first thousand subscribers, so that's going to be big for the channel. That actually means that we get to be officially YouTubers, yay! Because uh, that that's like the monetized thing that you know I already got all the hours. You know, people like to watch the content. We just need people to subscribe. So if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be great. I'm breaking a fourth wall here. What am I doing? Release our videos for free for everyone. Thank you so That's much for your support. Kurzgesagt would not exist without you. Oh, I appreciate it, Curtis Art. I, I couldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without you guys either. I appreciate it. Another great video, ladies and gentlemen, by Curtis Art. Incredible, incredible videos. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I got to give something that I'm a little bit of an expert in, but also we got to hear their uh, evidence backed by facts and science and studies. So obviously more studies need to be done, but so far I actually agree with everything that they're saying there. They went a little negative on the, on the weed smokers, so I know some of y'all was really feeling that. Uh, but at the same time, they could have it could have been it could have been worse. They gave you some positives, but really the most important thing is wait until you're in your twenties to start smoking. It's like, what are you doing? You know, hey, it's not you know, it's not that big of a deal. Just live your life, and then once you're you pass high school, then you can start doing whatever you want to do. Go to college, you know, all that stuff first. Move out of your parents' house, and then you can start smoking. But then. Try not to get addicted, and if you do see yourself in those having those addictive patterns, you know, maybe just call a friend, call some help, let people know, and you know, just try your best. Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to say thank you as always. If you made it this far and you're listening to all these ramblings and all the things, then I want to say thank you. I love you. Bye.